everyone, I'm the Kaishin Okami here at Fan Expo Denver 2022 with... Fabrice Sapolsky. And for those who might not know who you are, who are you and what do you do? I am a writer, artist, editor, publisher, letter designer, you name it, I have it. I have been called the Swiss Army Knife of Comics. Because you do everything? Because I do everything. But not because I want to, out of necessity, because first that's one last person that I need to pay. And comics are often done on a budget. Um, and also because, you know, I've, I've been an outsider all my comics career and I've been working for 25 years. And so at one point, if you want to keep being in this business, you have to learn how to do things. So, yeah. So I'm all that, and I am mostly known by a lot of people here as the co-creator of Spider-Man Noir, which, my fault, <laughs> was my original idea. Um, but since then, I've been doing a lot of things. I've been an editor at multiple companies, at Humanoids for a couple of years. I, I'm freelancing as an editor also at Heavy Metal now. Uh, but mostly, most of my time is uh, with my own company that I created in 2019 called Fair Square Comics. And how did you go about creating this? Because it sounds like if you created in 2019, that was right before COVID hit. So, actually, this is a funny story. I created Fair Square Comics while I was still working with Humanoids. And so, at, at first, it was not to become a publisher. It was just to have a place to host my career on comics. And also because my accountant called me up and said like, dude, you're doing a lot of shows. That's a lot of cash. So uh, <laughs> long gone are those days, let me tell you. Um, so you might want to do a, like create a, a, an LLC because if not, you're going to be killed by the IRS. So I did that. Uh, and then the pandemic hits and I lose my job and there are no shows <laughs> so there's no money left and I'm like what am I gonna do with it and I think the, the key factor is the murder of George Floyd when uh, when that happened in 2020 May 2020 I was very angry I was very angry at society and I was very angry as a person because I'm a, I'm an ally, I'm also a minority, I'm an immigrant, and and it was like insane to me what happened that day. And so I was talking to one of my good black friends, Chris Harris. Hi, Chris. Um, and he said to me, "Well, if you're angry, um, you have to do what you know how to do best, and which is making comics." So him and I, we teamed up and we created an anthology called Wars the New Black. And that thing became a sensation on Kickstarter in the summer of 2020. We raised up to $48,000 on Kickstarter. And from there, there was no way back. Uh, Fair Square Comics was there, became the publisher, and I was like, okay, well, I said 400 resumes and I got no job, so I guess my side job is becoming my real job. And I had to make it work because it, there's no safety net, you know? So either it works or it works. So being that you went on, first you did Spider-Man Noir, and then you did Noir in Black. Noir in Black. Clearly you are a fan of film noir, right? I am a fan of film noir, of, of noir novels. Uh, I grew up with that. Uh, and for the funny story, because you're gonna like this, initially when Spider-Man Noir was pitched, it was pitched with two brains. Dave Hines' brain and my brain. My brain was more noir, and Dave's brain was more pop. Uh, so for a minute, he wanted me. He wanted to convince me to call the the, the project Spider-Man Noir. But I insisted, and Marvel chose Spider-Man Noir. So I, think I was that's right on this. Far more catchy than Spider-Man Hulk. Look, Dave is a fantastic person. He's a wonderful uh, creator. He does a lot of, of work at Image Comics with Brian Haverly now, um, and uh, and I will always be um, thankful and grateful that he opened his mind and his arm 
to welcome me as a co-creator uh, because honestly, he didn't have to do it. He just thought that my ideas were good and that we could do something together. And this is what we did. I mean, until it all fizzled. <laughs> so what got you into wanting to be in the comics? I started, I started 25 years ago as a comic book journalist. I created in my home country in France a magazine called Comic Box that lasted 17 years. Uh, died three times. They're actually relaunching it now over there with the original team minus myself because I'm here. Um, and, uh, and it's a pretty interesting initiative, creating a magazine about comics and only about American comics. France has its own industry of comics, but I was never just interested in French comics. So this is funny, right? Um, so I was always an outsider, even in my own country. Um, so I did that for a while, and then Spider-Man Noir happened. I had the idea, we pitched it, it became a comic, it worked, there was no way back. I was a comic book writer. I was a creator, overnight. I mean, not overnight, it took two years, but like, you, you see what I mean? And um, and after that, I started, because I always thought that creators should own their material. And the proof is in the putty. I don't own Spider-Man Noir. It's Marvel's property, and that's okay. It was a work for hire thing, and I don't have any residuals, and I don't have any profit from it. So the only way for me to make anything from my creation was to create my own characters. A lot of other creators are doing this, so I was like, okay, let's do this. So I did a book first at Image for One Hit Wonder that is now at Fair Square Comics. Um, and I did I did the, the single issues at Image, and then Image declined to do the, uh, they didn't want to do the paperback. The paperback. So I was left with Oh crap, I invested $15,000 to create this mini series and I can't even have a trade paper. So it, I kept it like in the freezer up until I had the means to release it as a trade paper by myself. And since it was creator owned, it was easy because I always had the right to begin with. Then I did another series in 2016 called Intertwine. I'm sold out at the show, so too bad. Um, that was also on Kickstarter, made up good amount of money on Kickstarter, then went to Dynamite, it didn't go well, and uh, flash forward to five years later, we got the rights back, and we reprinted it in, in at Fair Square Comics. So again, this is another of my IPs that were there. So, And this is funny, uh, One It Wonder was a 180 from Spider-Man Noir, because I'm not just a one-trick pony. I have different layers to my personality, and I love, I have humor. Sorry. So I created a, a crime comedy book. Um, but a lot of people were like, take it back. Like, give me back the guy who did Spider-Man Noir. And so a lot of critics hated One Hit Wonder when it was released. Now, it, it, now it's different. Like, we're a long time after, it's been collected, it makes more sense, and people actually like it. I'm selling a lot of One Hit Wonders now. Uh, but back in the day, in 2014, when it was first released, it was like, this is BS. No way I'm gonna buy that. Bring me back Spider-Man. Anyhow, uh, Intertwine is Kung Fu War. And Intertwine is interesting because A, it's the first book that I wrote when I moved to the United States in 2015. And second, it's also uh, a book that uses a lot of ideas that I had for Spider-Man Noir and I couldn't do because Marvel was not interested in more Spider-Man Noir, at least not for me. So, um, it was, that's all right. I see you behind the camera. You can't see it, but behind the camera I can see like that. Uh, um, so yeah, and intertwine is extremely important to me. Not just because it's a noir book, not just because it's an immigrant uh, led book, but also because it's my Spider-Man. It's a universe where people like me, immigrants and minorities, take the lead 
and are actually not just in the background with no name. And that's, I think, when I created uh, Intertwine with Fred Van Swong, who's the other co-creator with me, um, it was clearly the first step towards what would become Fair Square Comics. And there's a reason why our, um, our tagline is comics from the rest of us. Because I always wanted, I, I know that especially in the United States, a lot of people who are from minorities are, and who are making comics are making comics for their peers, for people like them. And that's fine. But I was not raised like that. I was raised in a country where everyone is the same. And it's not community-based, it's, it's nation-based. And so for me, it was important that, yes, it comes from immigrants and minorities, but it talks to everybody. Everybody can relate. That's what Marvel achieved so well with Miles Morales. Miles Morales speaks to everyone. Yes. And to a certain extent, it was kind of an example to what I want to do with my comics and the comics that we publish as Fair Square Comics because of course at first it was just my IPs but now we welcome other creators not just the creators from Norris and Black 40 black talents very talented wonderful people uh, and they keep all their rights very important um, but now we have this book Jaeger that came out in June that's from Ibrahim Mustafa who is uh, one of the most talented spy thriller and noir creator I've ever met. And I'm very fortunate that he agreed to partner with us to release this book, Jaeger, which is the first graphic novel, I mean, I call it a, gra a mini graphic novel because it's only 60 pages, but it's like square bound quality. And um, But it's the, uh, it's a new model for us and since it's working and it's almost sold out at Diamond right now, all our future smaller sized comics are going to be released in that format. Because also as a, an independent publisher, you have to stand out. You have not just to think about the content, but you also have to think about the package. And this is also one of the things where having been a publishing professional for so long, this is something that I know how to do, is how to package a book, how to design it, how to make it look, how to talk to a printer so that it's not ruined uh, when it comes to the stand. So everything, there's an attention to detail in what we're doing at Fair Square Comics. And, uh, and I love that part because I know that when people open their envelope with our comic when we send it or after a Kickstarter campaign or whether they discover it on the stands at their comic book store or when they go to a Barnes and Noble because we're distributed all, all, in all these outlets, they have to have an experience. The same experience that I had when I went to my comic store and I was 15 years old and I was looking at a cover from the X-Men and I was like, wow, this is what I want to do. Now, how do you ensure that your um, creators are feeling more empowered because you do give them the content ownership but how do you keep them where they feel empowered to still create and not think that they have to go to one of the bigger outlets i'm going to tell it to you flat uh -huh. i have i have the best deal in comics first i don't treat creators like children mm -hmm. they appreciate that very much and second everything is transparent oh from the moment when the first orders come in to the moment where we're going to shipping, they know what everything costs, how much they make, and how much I make. Oh. And this kind of social contract is very important to me. Mm -hmm. It's the it's it's the I w it's basically the golden rule. I want to treat other creators like I will always wanted to be treated, but I was never treated. And I'm not going to go into details with previous publishers I worked with uh, on how it went wrong. Sure. But there are things that I pay attention to. And the first thing is I will present information to creators so that they don't feel that they're being taken advantage of. The other thing is I'm a creator myself. And 
when you're a creator talking to other creators, they're inclined to more or less hear what you have to say with a different like state of mind than if you're an executive from a big company. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's important to showcase that diversity in comics because looking at it from even a perspective of like myself as a woman who enjoys comics, you don't see much diversity from people of color or women. Not, not with us. And so I appreciate any organization that showcases that and helps people know that they can be empowered to enjoy comics Absolutely. that speak to them directly. And we're also talking directly to retailers and fans. That's why we designed a color-coded system. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the back where I, no, no, here, sorry, uh -huh. no, where is it? No. Right behind here. it, right there. Uh, our logo comes in three colors, okay? When you see a green color on our logo, it means that the IP either belongs to me or Fresh Red Comics. Mm -hmm. If you see a purple logo, that means it's pure creator owned and everything goes to the creators after we deduct our costs and it's a partnership. We're a publishing partner to them. And then there's Fair Square Blue, where it's uh, for Mutiny or Magazine, but also for the licenses that we acquire from other territories to publish in the US. That way, it's very subtle. And most people don't won't even notice the difference. No. But it's important to us that other professionals know that we comment to the page. I like that. And where can people go to online to find your comics? Find well, first they can buy them at their comic book store, <laughs> or on Amazon, or Barnes and Noble, or everywhere that where they buy books. Um, and second, they can go to fairsquarecomics.com. We also have a web store, and people can buy all our stuff that is still available. Some things are sold out, fortunately. Um, but yeah, most of the things are, are available. And we're touring. That's also one of the things that we do. We're present um, at many, many shows all through the years, because again, we want to promote not just our stuff, but also the stuff from other creators that work with us. And um, we're doing something like 15 shows a year. Any final words for the viewers? Um, well, keep reading a lot of comics, open your mind, and I want to say something, because that's something that is very important. Um, when you read Marvel and DC comics, it's fun. We need them. We need them to be in good health, because they are driving our market, and they will always have more marketing power and more exposure than we will ever have. But don't just eat one type of meal. Don't just go to McDonald's. Go to fine dining. Go to like a boutique publisher like Fair Square Comics. And there are other fine publishers out there that are, are either our size or a little bigger or a little smaller that are doing a killer job delivering great, great stories, great, um, great content, great art. And I want people to keep doing that to keep an eye on open, to keep a mind open, to keep their eyes open, so that they not just go for the brand, but also go for people like us, and they might be surprised in a very good way. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Until next time, bye.